I think this thing is recording, but it still has not told me that it is. Um, did anyone have questions on image number two? Why do we have all these hidden lines here? All right, we have hidden lines in this right view. First off, all your views should be in alignment. This is the bottom of the part right here. These bottoms should be aligned. And that allows us to just trace over the same height of the part. And we want to put these in, you know, you have these little tick marks like this in each corner. If you wanted to just, you know, draw that line down, that's fine. Just draw it really lightly. Because in the real world, you'd be uh, making copies of this and creating a PDF from it, even if it was a manual drawing. If you do not put these in this corner, this miter line won't work because it is is actually drawn at an absolute 45. So if you're just hand sketching that in, that's not going to work. It needs to be 45 to be precise. But the thing is that when you have that connected to the back side of the part and connected to the right side of the part at 45 degrees, then this is going to be equidistant. You see how that works? All right. So we have a hidden line here for the bottom of the holes and these holes are in alignment. So we only show one hidden line. Hidden lines are dashed lines. Now this hole goes all the way through the part, right? It goes all the way through the part. So the edge of that hidden line should start and stop where that cut happens, where that cut starts and stops. And then here's the top extents of the hole. We can't see the east and west quadrants, if you will, and I'm saying the east and west points, north, south, east and west, what we call a point or quadrant. Um, so these, these are the extents, the top and bottom of the hole, and they go all the way. Your, your dash lines are for hidden geometry, something that we can't touch. So the first thing we draw is all the visible lines. And when you have the visible lines, then you can trace over, okay, that's that far up. And this one is this far up. I don't have to count that again and start my start drawing. I can just put a ruler on this. You know, if you had a horizontal rule, you could just like, okay, that's lined up. And this is square or horizontal. So it starts right here and ends right here. The next hidden line is for this back edge. I can't touch that through this face right here. And it is not in alignment with this hole. So we do see that one. So the hierarchy of lines is exactly the same as the order in which we would draw these things. We don't have to do that, but we can't project hidden lines without visible lines, right? So visible lines first, hidden lines second, and that is the order in which if two are right on top of each other, one overrides the other. So you see this visible edge right here? I can touch that on that side. But back behind here, I have a hidden line. They're directly in alignment. And if I drew a hidden line right on top of a visible line, think about that. That would just, that would just negate the effort of drawing that hidden line anyway. Now, center lines are a little bit different. Center lines extend beyond the object so it doesn't look like geometry. You see that? This is what I'm going to call an axial center line. If you have, you know, this is kind of hard to see. And if I zoom in on this a bit, you will have a little plus. And then you have a space and then you'll have a leg that goes out beyond the circular object. Because if we stopped at that circular object, it might look like geometry. So we want to extend those out just a little bit. And they can be uniform, but don't go too far with them because it could look like it's coming from something else. Now, why do we have hidden lines here and here? Because if I didn't have a hidden line here, it would look like this is a solid all the way through the part. We have a cut right here. And it's showing that hidden, the hidden edge back behind that. So that tells me that that's not solid. Up at the top, we have the same holes with our axial center lines. 
anytime here's the way I like to think about axial center lines. Anytime I have a bullseye like that, I'm going to have an axial center line in every other view that's adjacent, right? In every view where I'm showing that geometry, I'm going to have an axial center line. We don't have really any hidden lines in the top view except for the holes. These planes just look like an edge. You know, they're two different angles, but it just, this is a flat and this is an inclined plane and this is an inclined plane or angle plane. Does anyone have questions about number two? Okay, so I'm gonna make this solution too. And I'm going to stop and start this video a lot. I had such a long time of uploading videos last night. 